Right, so today we're continuing one of the most explosive 90 Day Fiancé sagas of all time. Over the past 15 videos, we've looked at Daniela Muhammad's infamous appearance on season 2 of 90 Day Fiancé before moving on to season 1 of 90 Day Fiancé Happily Ever After. Thankfully, the drama is still in full swing and Danielle is about to flip Muhammad's world upside down all over again. It's now been months since the pair last saw each other in that jaw-dropping season finale tell-all episode, and it seems at first glance that Danielle is finally moving on. I'm going back to college, and I'm looking for a nicer home for me and my daughters, and I even have a new boyfriend. <laughs> Good luck to him. Honestly, this woman has hours of public footage of her stalking, harassing, and blackmailing her ex. Either this mystery man is completely oblivious to it all, or his standards have dropped almost as low as every woman who has ever dated Big Ed. We're in a long distance relationship. He lives like six hours away. It has been a long time since I've felt this happy. So it seems she's in a good place, which is good for her at least. But despite having a boyfriend, it seems like she hasn't fully moved on yet because she's still on Muhammad's case. Last time she tracked him down, Muhammad called the police on her, but that hasn't stopped her from trying again. I've been trying to track him down for a while and I finally found him. He's going to have a visitor soon and I'm finally going to get some payback. So with the surprise en route, it's time for us to go and catch up with Muhammad. Once Danielle found out his address, he knew he had to start over again. But not wanting to leave the Florida sunshine, he moved from Miami to Fort Ritchie, where he now lives as a driver with his own apartment. Unfortunately though, just as his life is getting back on track, he receives a letter. I just got served with the annulment paper. I can't believe that Danielle, she filed for an annulment again because last time uh, we spoke, uh, we agreed for a divorce. So Danielle has filed for an annulment again. Honestly, I considered not covering this series because I thought it was just going to be a repeat of last season all over again. But having snuck a little glimpse of the absolutely insane fights and arguments coming up, I just couldn't not. For now though, Muhammad is filled with more disappointment and confusion than anger. I don't know what she's trying to do, why she's doing this to me. It's so frustrating. She keeps doing the same all the time, like promise me something and then do, do something different. It is bizarre how they spent so long talking about everything and trying to rekindle their friendship before Danielle finally withdrew the annulment, only for her to come back months later and apply for one all over again for no apparent reason. It's clear Muhammad just wants to move on with his life and sail off into the Florida sunset, but Danielle is a big fishy anchor weighing him down. So to deal with it, he calls her up and asks her what's going on, and she confirms that she has indeed refiled the annulment, but that she won't be pulling it this time. Oh, really? Yeah, really. I would do anything under the, the law to stay here in this country. Honestly, dating Danielle for as long as he did is enough. This man has earned his green card a hundred times over in my books. Especially given he's a hardworking, tax-paying citizen, he is literally an asset to the country. Although, of course, he can't just say that he's a good citizen and should therefore be allowed to stay in the country, because that's just not how immigration law works. So instead, he's going to go back to Ohio once again to try and get Danielle to pull the annulment. I think I'm coming to Ohio soon. I'm gonna go to the courthouse and check about it, okay? Okay. If you have time, we can sit down and talk. We can sit down and talk. The fact that she's open to talking to him makes it clear that this is all just a game to her. Like if she just wanted him out of the country and she was done with him, why would she say yes to this? She just wants another excuse to get him back in her life again. It's such a transparent play. I hope Danielle listened to me when I go to Ohio. I don't think that she can force me to leave the country because it's not up to her. She's trying to ruin my life, but that's not right. I think what makes this even worse is that she's not just trying to ruin his life, she's using the threat of ruining his life to keep him around. Like, once again, she's dangling the threat of deportation over his head to get him to come crawling back to her. So it's not just vindictive, it's also grossly manipulative. Anyway, next up, Danielle goes to look for a new trailer for her and her kids, and she brings along her friend Beth. Whilst they're there, Danielle brings up the most recent developments with Muhammad, and Beth starts questioning whether she truly is over him. I'm truly over it. Good. But it's still a long road. And he's coming to Ohio. 
Yep, and that seals it. It is the exact same play all over again. I genuinely don't think there is anyone out there that hates Muhammad more than Beth does. And I also think that there are a few other people that know how weak Will Danielle is. So Beth just clearly knows as well as anyone else exactly where this is going. He's wanting to meet with me. I don't know about what, but... <laughs> I don't know what. She is so bad at hiding it. Of course he's coming to talk about the annulment. It's the cheese in the rat trap that she set for him. I know Danielle's going to be convincing herself that maybe Muhammad's actually coming to rekindle their marriage, but there is no way that Beth doesn't see through this whole thing. <laughs> I, obviously he thinks you're dumb enough to, for round oh, two. Oh, I'm not dumb enough to pull it. Um, I want those over with. Who doesn't think that she's dumb enough for round two? There's not just a screw loose with Danielle, there's a whole toolbox missing. Also, it's a slightly different context here, but this isn't even the first time that Danielle's tried to go for round two with Muhammad against his will. When you filed that first anomaly, I know you still had feelings like maybe you could try yeah. and work it out. I really don't care that he's coming. And you didn't invite him up here? I didn't invite him. He came on his own. I mean, she didn't invite him explicitly, but she dealt the hand he played, didn't she? Like, okay, he may have been the one to have called and said, let's talk, but that's only because it was pretty much the only option she left him with. He wouldn't be doing any of this if his whole livelihood wasn't on the line. If he screws up any of her happiness by being in town and, and, and trying to, um, you know, screw up the good things she has going on, oh my goodness, I'll be piloting the plane back to Tunisia for him. I don't like the way Beth talks about deporting him too. I don't blame her for disliking Muhammad given the impact he's had on Danielle's life, even though much of it is Danielle's fault. But there's definitely a subtle amount of xenophobia mixed in there as well. And as the next few videos go on, the subtlety definitely wears off. For now though, Muhammad remains safely in the US, so he begins his six hour drive from Florida to Ohio. However, on the way, he's so overcome with anxiety, focusing on the recurring nightmare with Danielle, unfolding all over again, that he doesn't realise he's running low on petrol until it's too late and his car breaks down. With few options, he calls Danielle for help, but with her needing to get to work for 3pm, she tells him that she doesn't have time to come and save him. I was very surprised that he reached out to me for help. <laughs> because I don't know what he was thinking, but... <laughs> She is such a bizarre human being. She cannot claim to be completely over him and then get this giddy when she has him exactly where she wants him. That said though, I am somewhat surprised at her self-restraint. I would have expected her to pick saving Muhammad's day over her job every single time. I don't know if she is getting ready for a fight, that's why she doesn't want to help me, uh, but I'm trying to bring some peace between me and Daniel here. And now I am worried that she won't pull the annulment. Well, before Muhammad finds out his fate with Danielle, he goes to see a lawyer to see what his other options are if he can't convince her to pull the annulment. Much to his disappointment, he's told that given he's no longer with Danielle, he's out of status. And although there isn't exactly a patrol out to get him, he could get deported from the country at any time. And uh, that means the first time Border Patrol walks up on you, asks for your status, asks for your green card, or asks for whatever information like that, you could be deported. Thankfully, there is some light at the end of the tunnel because the lawyer then basically says that if he did marry Danielle with the intent to spend the rest of his life with her, rather than just using her for a green card and then dumping her, he may yet be able to stay. I came here to have a life with her, but I cannot handle any more, you know? I, w I was living in a nightmare with her. Fortunately for Muhammad, there is plenty of evidence to support his case. I mean, there are police reports, there are people involved, there are mutual friends who can back him up. And of course, plenty of Danielle's insufferable behavior was caught on camera. To be honest with you, I have nothing to hide. And if I talk to the immigration, I'm just gonna tell them what happened because what happened is not somebody can handle, you know, it's too much. Okay. Unfortunately, no matter how strong his case may seem, there's just no way of knowing for certain whether it'll hold up in court. So for now, his best bet is convincing Danielle to withdraw the annulment. Until then, all he can do is make sure that he doesn't get caught in a situation where his green card status is called into question. Thank you. All right, good enough. I'm going to be careful uh, to be uh, on the right side of the law because I want to stay in this country. 
So Muhammad sets off for a night in his motel ahead of his meeting with Danielle the following day. And now having spoken to his lawyer, he's decided that his best chance at being able to remain in the US is to do everything in his power to convince Danielle to be his friend again. However, it looks like it's not gonna come easy because both of them are in completely different spirits ahead of their big talk. Danielle, as giddy as ever, appears to be relishing being back in control and seemingly cannot wait to be face to face again with Muhammad. When Muhammad got served, he said he was coming to Ohio and he wanted to meet up with me so we could talk. I am curious about what he wants to talk about. Obviously, he just wants to talk about the annulment. Does she seriously think he wants to discuss anything else? If she is genuinely sitting there thinking he's going to offer any kind of relationship for any reason other than to placate her, she is deluding herself. And while she appears to be relishing the reignition of this garbage heap, Muhammad seemingly cannot wait to just get the whole thing out of the way again. I'm just gonna see Danielle for the first time in months and I have a weird feeling because I don't know if she's going just to talk and listen or go crazy again with all the crying and all the screaming and stuff. I genuinely find it so close to being unbearable to watch when Danielle starts crying. How this man put up with it for two years is beyond me. And the fact that he has to keep putting himself through it every single time that he thinks the door has finally closed on the situation. I genuinely don't know how he does it. I've gotten stronger. And I've learned his tricks. He cannot convince me this time to pull the annulment. Yeah, right. How much do we actually think that she's going to stick to this? She might have been riled up by Beth, her family, and if she has any, her other friends. But I feel like the second Muhammad walks into that room, her knees are going to go weak and she's going to cave to him. And unsurprisingly, after an awkward hello, it doesn't take long for her game plan to go right out the window. It's getting more complicated now. I'm apologizing again for so many things I said. So Muhammad's being nice and this is definitely not at all how Danielle saw this going. Her face lit up when he said things were complicated but immediately dropped as soon as he apologized. It's literally like she was disappointed that he took the mature route. He thinks that if he's nice enough that I will pull the annulment. But he don't know the new me. You know what's hilarious? She says that she knows his tricks and won't fall for them again, and then immediately falls for the most simple one. Like she is playing directly into his hands by saying all of this on camera. When I first came here, mm -hmm. how was it? It was good. Everyone was getting along and stuff. And when we started having problems, when people started getting involved, right? Mm -hmm. It's almost like watching one of those interrogation tapes where the interrogator purposefully gets the suspect to admit something out loud. I mean, no doubt he is in part trying to find peace with Danielle, but he's also so clearly building his case by getting her to agree in solid evidence form that the relationship wasn't a scam, it just didn't work out for a multitude of reasons. He even says it's not fair to blame the failure of the relationship entirely on him, and she agrees. And then she goes on to say this. We both said stuff that has been needed to be said for a while now. It still hurts that our marriage didn't work out, but I also know I made mistakes. So once they got over discussing who is at fault for what, Muhammad starts sweet talking Danielle a bit more, presumably to get her to become more agreeable for when he brings up the annulment and says that it's nice that they can talk as friends before asking her how her life is going. I'm seeing someone. Oh, yeah. I wish you good luck, you know. He doesn't know what to say. You know, given how delusional Danielle is, it would not surprise me at all if she thought that telling him that would make him jealous or make him realize what he was missing out on. But he just could not care less. Although I think he's slightly delusional himself in some ways. I think with Danielle having a new boyfriend, it's going to make things better because before she was trying to get back to me or make me go back to her. But now I don't think I have to worry about that. Poor, sweet, naive Muhammad. I think judging from her behavior, he does have to worry about that. And honestly, given he knows exactly what Danielle is like, I'm surprised he thinks this changes anything. If you want to be a close friend of mine, that would be like something good for me. Yeah, but... Friendship right off the bat is going to take time. So as expected, she has broken, but at least she's holding her ground a little bit. To be fair to her, she goes on to say that she's ready to move on, but that she knows to do that, she has to forgive him. However, if she's not going to get a relationship from him, there is one thing she wants him to do for her. For us to be friends, 
you need to apologize to my family members. I've lost my family because of you and me and everything that's been going on. Honestly, I don't know how to feel about this. On the one hand, getting her to pull the annulment again will put her in a difficult position with her family because obviously they want her to get him deported. So really, she's just asking him to help her help him. But on the other hand, it's not an easy one for his ego because after everything she put him through, what is he apologizing to them for really? I would do it. I hope after this meeting with Daniel's family, they will stop putting pressure on her to get me deported. Well, whether it's to be the bigger person or just doing whatever it takes to get Danielle to pull the annulment, I'm glad Mohammed is planning on apologizing to finally put an end to this mess. However, whether her family, one of whom has a restraining order against them, will actually accept that apology, we're just gonna have to find out. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.